Hi, welcome back everyone to ZSK. I'm Britta Sanders and I wish you a very happy new year. Um, we got straight back to work and I will show you how um, the base fact developed in the past years. We implement quite, quite some new features and um, you might not have seen them straight away, so I will show them now. If you have a few more questions, let me know. Uh, leave a comment below, contact me on the webpage or speak to me on the exhibitions directly. So let's see what news we have. First of all, you can now make the connection between the you know, the dots of the umlaute or the eye um, with a stitch in the connection. We have a function to optimize your end directions so that the lettering all have the same height. We have the barcode in the catalog printing option. You can change the orientation of your center line when you use the set in center line program. We have a new tool to work around in your work field. Um, you can have the automatic frames with mitre corners. We have automatic saving with the number and the name of a design. If you export a stitch file, your computer will now still show your designs with a little pictogram. You can save your design head now with also the sequence, size, color and shape as a default. And now we also optimize our quick text with the head selection option. Also on this there is a webinar if you check the other videos here on YouTube or anywhere um, for further information. Right, let's have a look in detail. Like I mentioned, there are some new features hidden in the monogram function. For example, we have here already since the very first release of Base Pack 10, we can say we never want to cut between the dots. So now between this dot of the eye, there is no trim. And now what's new since the latest version, we can say we want a stitch in the connection. So even though I want to save the trimming in here, it does a stitch in between so that the thread is hidden in between. Right, let's stay here with the monogram. If I go to extend it, there's the new window here for the end direction. So you maybe know that if you, for example, try to embroider an S, like the letter S here, it might turn out like the number eight in case, because there will be shrinkage in this and that direction, but not here. Another example would be here, the W and the O. If you stitch this out, the O will always be shorter than the W because this letter shrinks in this direction, while this letter shrinks in that direction. So if I say shrink the or shorten the end direction by, let's say, half a millimeter, you see that now it takes the last stitches away here in the end direction. So now this is shorter and it will be shortened so that this one is now on the machine as short as the O. Now this you have to find out by experience, but now you can at least say here in end direction, you can set it up. Be careful in the pre-installed lettering. A lot of these fonts already included a shortage. You can always see that here from this, from this grid. And if you do this here with this example, you can see that it shortened it here now. Also here and here, always here in the end directions. Here, this one, so that will all look neat on the machine. The next feature I um, introduce you to is that we have here our print program. And if you do here catalog print, you can say we have a barcode. So let me have a look here at the preview. You can create now your own folder with these printouts so that customers can directly pick. You just need to scan it and it will directly load the referring design. And then of course you also have some new features for the digitizing. So if I use my center line here, I have this drawing tool here. I select my circle. So far it was always on the center line, but what if I receive a vector file from the customer where it's the outside of the circle? Therefore we have here under parameters our proportion to the right side. So now it's 50-50 to each side. If I make it 100% to one side, it will be inside of this line. So that you're actually yeah, being able to use any part of the circle. Right, so here I show you one more one of my favorite features actually. Very simple. If I hold the Alt key, this hand comes up and I can move around in my working area. Quite intuitive, a bit like any other illustration program. Makes your life a bit easier. So for the ones of you that like to use the frame function here in the block mode, we have now some news that we are able to actually make the corners as mitre corners here. This little, this little box here is quite important. And you pick a square or something, you say, Okay, and you see, there's now a little mitre corner. 
of course in the settings you're also able then to put the um, the settings up for the for the Meister corners. Then the new Spacepack version also automatically takes over number and name of the design that you put here in the design head. So you might already seen the new design head here. Um, I have now the design number 123, version number 1, and my name is Ship. If I now say OK, if I save as, you see it automatically took over 12301 and the name. Save, yes I override it now, OK. So this is new and then on top of this if I say export to ZSK or any other stitch file actually it doesn't really matter. I say OK, I put this on my desktop, save. You see that even though it's a stitch file, yeah, here's my, my stitch file. It shows me the pictogram. So even if I have my list view here, you can see the red one is my stitch file and the blue one here, the blue frame, is my raw base pack file. But nevertheless, both of them now show a little pictogram of my design. That should make your life easier too. Let's have a quick look once again in the design information. You have here two new features. So you can define your sequence size and shape right from this design head. So you might be familiar with this window already, but now you don't have to go all the long way through this pull down menu here. You have it straight here in your design head. All pretty nice and compact here. Also here you can tick that you have a sequence design. What's new now in the past weeks is that you can now say save as a default. So if I activate this once I can start a new page and it will automatically keep sequence size and shape and the colors here in my design head. And then here also in the uh, quick text function we've got some news. You might have already heard that you're able to put the head selection in consideration. So if you stitch a few names, each head you can also do it on multi-head machine. What the problem was so far that you could only use it for emblems or things because you didn't know which t-shirt to put on what machine. So now we have print order info and you can even give this a title or you know write in further comments for the operator. If you then load the text file and send the order, it automat automatically comes up here with the printing. So I make this PDF, okay. You see here, further comments. That's whatever you wrote in there. It's on my six head machine on the, in the showroom and head one and two work with ZSK, head three does Michaela, head four does Rene and so on. There's also, if you need further info on the set selection, there's a webinar online where you also see what this feature can actually do and how it can actually help you to further optimize your embroidery time. All right, so these were all the recent news. Uh, if you still don't have any base pack 10, there is also a video on the general news. You know, when you update from 8 to 10, even from 7 to 8, there are a lot of news. So, um, yeah, I would suggest you check out the other videos on YouTube or meet me on the next exhibition and we can have a chat. Thank you very much for watching and I speak to you soon. Thanks and bye bye.